فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم If you say he, if you say for example see we have the word see bawi see ba way he Okay good If I say marartu bi see bawi him صح بي سي بوي هن اي بوت تنوين ذا اي ويل تو جيت ذا برادر اند سيسترز يو جايز نو سي بوي از ا مانز نيم رايت Does anyone, has anyone ever heard of Sibawi before? Huh? Has anyone ever met him before? Has anyone met him? Sibawi, uh, he is, a, is, a, is the man who basically, is the, he's called the father of grammar. He is a, he's the father of grammar. English, who's the, who's, the, English, who's the father of English? Shakespeare? Yeah? Is it Shakespeare? He's known, okay. Yeah, let's just say he's like Shakespeare. This is just a Muslim, inshallah ta'ala. Sibawi is the father of grammar. Like when you say Sibawi, that's it, khalas. Khudi khalam, that's Sibawi. There's a kitab called, there's a kitab he wrote in grammar. Sibawi is the father of grammar. Okay, and he's not Arab, Arab by the way, he's a Persian. And he put down the grammar. That again shows you that don't let your efforts put you behind, akhi. That's really what it is. If you ever see yourself pushing, uh, not learning enough, is because of yourself. The first enemy you have is who? I really want us to know that. See, but he's not an Arab. He's a Persian. He knew, he wrote Arabic grammar, placed it in a scholastic knowledge base, where even the Arabs today are benefiting from it. If we write see, but him with that tenween, It doesn't necessarily mean the Sibawi that comes to our mind. It's not him. It's another one. It could be any, any Sibawi. It's indefinite now. Does that make sense? The minute I put that Tanween in there, it is any Sibawi. Does that make sense? But when I say Sibawi, it's the one. It's the one. It's the Sibawi that we know. Do you see my point? His name is Abu Bishr Uthman ibn Qambar al-Farisi rahimahullah. Yeah? That's another discussion we're going to properly go into insha'Allah ta'ala with the Mumtamima. For now, la, there can't be. Does that make sense now? Then we go to the next one which is Tanweenul Iwad. Tanweenul Iwad is what? Um, Tanween al-Iwad is, is the third type. Tanween al-Iwad is what is two types. The Tanween al-Iwad is two types. The first one is Iwad on al jumla. Okay, brothers, pay attention here and sisters. This is Wallahi, brothers and sisters, if you learn these little grammar rulings and we study it together, Wallahi, when we do the tasir of the Quran, we will really benefit a lot from it. Wallahi, we will. Because a lot of the fawaid in the Quran, they come from the structure in the grammar as well. There's some fawaid that can be taken out of it like that. But when I prepare the tafsir for the students, sometimes I have to withhold some information because will they even be able to understand it? It's important to learn the Arabic language and the grammar, especially grammar. Now, Allah says in the Quran, pay attention. He says, this is jumla, sentences. It's the tanween that takes the places of sentences. Sentences that you were saying, you don't know, you don't need to say anymore. This tanween suffices you from it. That's why it's called iwab. It exchanged the whole information into once in just in just into a tanween. I'll give an example. Allah says in the Quran, Ida ja and uh, Allah says, Ida zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha. The day when the earth shakes. Okay. Wa akhrajatil ardu athqalaha. And the earth brings out its load, meaning the people who are in it come out. Ida zulzilatil ardu. زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها and the dead person says the day of judgment what is for me what does Allah say after that يوم إذن يوم إذن means what that day what day the day that was everything that was already mentioned does that make sense يوم إذن that came here right now has a tanween at the ending يوم إذن 
صح؟ This tanween suffices us from all of the previous mentioned sentences. That day, which day? The day when the earth shakes. And it brings out its load. And the person says, ما لها. صح؟ That day. So that tanween is عوض. عوض عن جمل. Sentences that were just mentioned, that tanween holds that. Does it make sense? And generally you see that this type of tanween, generally it enters into the word يوم إذن, حين إذن. It enters into حين إذن. For example, Allah says in the Quran, صح? وَأَنْتُمْ حين إذن تنظرون. And you that day are looking at it. And what day? When am I looking at it? إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ When the... When the... Uh, uh, the uh, it reaches the حُلْقُومِ uh, Your collarbone. Now, Are you with me, brothers? How I was talking to us was before. So sometimes it can be a whole sentences that it's talking about. Are we together? Sometimes it can be jumla or jumal, jumal. Sentences are just being are being summarized here. Very good. There's another one that can go into just a letter. It just takes the place of a letter. Okay? Or a word, sorry, more like a word. The second one, it takes the place of a word. So, for example, if I say kullun qa'imun, for example, in the Arabic language, kullun, kullun qa'imun, qa'imun, kullun qa'imun, kullun qa'imun, every, everyone's standing. The word qa'imun, qa'imun is what we're looking at. What, that, what, is that, what, what has that, what has it taken the place of? Is it kullun or the kul? Uh, sorry, the word kullun, not qa'imun. The word kullun, the tanween in it, in the word kullun, the tanween in kullun has taken the place of one word that's missing from there, which is kullul insan, every person. صح? You don't need to bring that word back. You don't need to mention it. That tanween has sufficed you from it. It's taken its place. It's exchanged. It's been exchanged with the word al-insan. So sometimes it can be sentences, and sometimes it can just be one word. Does that make sense? The sentence complete in its complete form, it was what? Kullul insan. Kullul insani qa'imun. Everyone is standing. But here you just said kullun qa'imun. No. Last but not least is the issue of al-muqabala. The concept of al-muqabala. Are we all together? Muqabala is what? Are you there? We have a word called Jam'u, we're going to see inshallah later Mu'annath As-Salim What does Jam'u Annath Salim mean? mean? It means plural Feminine Sah? It's, f it's plural feminine It's a lot of women In the Arabic language called Jam'u Annath Salim Jam'u Annath Salim, what does it have at the ending when you say it? You say Muslimah yeah? You have Muslima. You have Muslimatin, rather than. You have the word? Muslimatin. Are you with me, brothers? Huh? Am I making sense? So you have the word Muslimatin. What's in the word Muslimatin? What's in there? Huh? Tell me. What's equal to the feminine of the women? What's equal to plural feminine? What's equivalent to it in level? The plural male. Are you with me? Are you there? The men, they want equal rights. The men are, uh, they're like, if the women have tanween, we want equal rights. So they had a little movement pushing for male, male, uh, what would it be called? Feminism, we know. What, 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 
Maleism, eh? Patriot. Huh? Patriot. No, that's more like country loving and. Patriot. We haven't even got a term for it. We'll just have to sign some. Are you sure? That's, that's not got to do anything with countries? Uh, Muslimuna. The noon here they said is a muqabal. Okay, when it cried too much, they said we gave it Muslimuna the noon. The noon here for the male is a muqabal an it tanwini fil jamu an it salim. Does it make sense? Because they sound the same. They sound the same, right? The man can't have tanween. He can't because he's a wa and noon at the ending. So they said to him, okay, we'll give you a noon. And that noon is the same as just same pronunciation, right? So now when you say Muslimatin and you say men, Muslimuna, they said we're happy. No, no, Alhamdulillah. Does it make sense? So the noon, all you need to remember is the noon in Jam'a Mudakkar is Salim is called the noon in it is a it's a muqabal of the tanween in the women's feminine. The uh, Jam'a and Salim. That's all it is. There's not so many benefits that you take from this one. It's just that you just need to remember. Does that make sense? Some of the grammarians, which is the call of the Jumhur, they actually say that the noon here from the men is what the women became jealous of. They asked for the tanween. This is the call of the, the Jumhur. That the man with the asal, they had jam muslimuna. Okay? And we'll take the, which opinion should we take? Okay. Does that make sense now, brothers and sisters? Does it make sense? Am I making sense? We're now going to move on to, we finished Tanween now. We finished the four types of Tanween. Um, yeah, I can give it to Arifat if you want. Okay, Tanween or Tamkeen is huwa al asma al So the first one is it enters onto nouns which are mu'rab. Mu'rab means noun which is fully a noun, basically. The second one is tankir. It enters onto nouns which are mabni. So same, all the time just write the word You just change the ending of what I write. So And the second one is al-mabniya. The third one is The third one, which is Iwab, it just means um, I haven't I got a definition for that one. But it's just whatever takes the place of the other one. And we have the last one, which is Tanween al Muqabala, who Allah Hikuli Jam al Mu'annat al Salim. It's the one that comes to the Jam al Mu'annat al Salim. That's if we take the opinion that the Noon was already there and the woman's Tanween is actually taken from the, the, the Noon in the Jam al Dakar Salim. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? We're now going to go through the huruf al khafti, right? We haven't mentioned that. Which is the last one. We haven't mentioned this one, huruf al khafti. The fourth sign. Huruf al khafti. The author, rahimahullah, he mentions huruf al khafti. And he said the following. The first he said was what? Min. What's the word min in the Arabic language? Min in the Arabic language is lil ibtidai to start off from somewhere in simple terms it means from from that's the first one that the author mentioned then the author mentioned ila he mentioned ila ila is the opposite of min it means basically to so the word min in the arabic language what does it benefit you al ibtidai there's a starting point the ila, what does it show you? Al intiha, that it's the ending point. It's the final, final destination, basically. So, for example, an example would be the habtu min al masjidi ila al manzili. In grammar, we have to really focus on a lot of examples, right? Because if we don't, it will be a bit hard to understand it. Usul al fiqh and qawaid al fiqhiyya and nahu and the likes of these sciences, they need a lot of examples. Or else they. And the many of the dawrat that we did, that we were teaching, we won't focus in on examples. So we will go through the theories and the principles. 
and it, I felt like a lot of people complained about it. Anyways, ala kulli hal, okay, min al masjidi, ama min al bayti, ila, ila al masjidi. So the have to means what? The have to means I went. So here, what's the word mean? It's from, right? And then here means to what? So what's the, what's the uh, uh, beginning destination? It's the house. What has indicated that? The min. What's the final destination? The masjid. What has indicated that? The two ila that's been used there. Crystal clear? They have to, I went to, um, from, the, uh, from the house, min al bayti ila al masjidi. Sahih? Very good. Then we have the word an. What does the word an mean? Yeah? Yeah. And mujawaza it means. What does mujawaza mean? It's when something passes through something. The word an the author uses is mujawaza. So for example, the Arabs will say Ramaytu 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 Sahma عن القوس رميت I threw the arrow from the bow now I'm saying in English from that's another problem but here it means the arrow what does it do it does mujawaza when it goes through the bow the arrow goes through it right this is the word an that's what it means when something goes through something it could be a yeah, yeah, it could be. It's again, in Arabic, like, oh, th those meanings are in there now. Does that make sense? So you say, Ramaytu sahma anil qawsi. Ramaytu as sahma anil qawsi. I threw the arrow. Would you say throw or you fired? That sounds like a gun. Give us a better word, Imran. Shot. Huh? Released. Released. Shot. Released. Huh? English, English, Abdul Rahman. Trans whoa, you transfer. It's like transfer sounds very nice. Yeah. That's also what it is. So it's the word mujawaza, right? Very good. We're well, then with the word ala. The word ala in the Arabic language is isti'la. Ala means what? Above. Huh? So you say rakibtu. Rakibtu. Ala al farasi. Keep to Alal Farasi. The word Ala, what does it show in the Arabic language? Huh? It says Isti'la, above. Above. You see, not, not knowing a Jerumiya can, or misunderstanding, just a Jerumiya can corrupt your Aqeedah. Al Rahmanu Ala Al Arshi Stawa, right? The word that's used here is what? Ala. Al Rahmanu Ala. الرحمن على ال على على صح؟ Are you with me? Here this is it. Simple. The word على is used. صحيح؟ That's important. The word that's used is the word في. في is in in. It's what? In. It's uh, in Arabic it's called Darfiya. 
A lot of fear means inside something. The word fear. You will say al ma'u the water. Fil kuzi is in the jar or the jug. So al ma'u al ma'u the water is in what? Fil kuzi is in the jar or the jug or the cup or whatever. Are you with me? Then we have rubba. Rubba is used for two. Based on whatever the context is. It can be used as to say a lot. And it can also be used to say little. So you may say Rubba Rajulin Bakhilin Lakituhu. Rubba here means in this particular context. A lot do I meet a stingy person. Because there are more stingy people in this world than there are generous people, right? Huh? True or false? Huh? So this rubba, the context tells you that he means a lot. So here you mean a lot do I meet stingy people. So rubba. The second one is taqlil. Which is the opposite, Rubba Rajulin Karimin Wajatuhu. Rubba Rajulin Karimin Wajatuhu. And little do I come across a generous man. And the word Rubba is used. No, no, no. Yeah, it can be in some context perhaps now. But I think that would be rubbama. No. That's the, the word rubba. Then we have the author brought the word ba wal ba ba. We have the word the ba that's put in the letter as well. Ba is more of what you mentioned, Abdurrahman. It's ta'adiyya, transmitting and transferring something. Are you with me? It's generally used for something that you're transmitting. Or, uh, yeah. Huh? Huh? No, it's not just a musahaba. It can be. It can be in whatever context you put it in. But generally it's used as the word ta'adiyya. Like for example, you say, Farihtu bi Muhammadin. I was happy because of Muhammad. It's not reasoning at soul, but the reason of what transmitted this happiness to you and brought it to you, it's through Muhammad. The calf, the calf is when you're trying to resemble two things, when you're trying to basically compare two things. So you say, Ali yun kal badri. Ali is like a full moon. And he's, you know how he glows, how he's shining, and etc. Ali yun kal badri. The kafia is tashbih. You're basically comparing Ali to the moon. Sahih? Does that make sense? That's the kaf. I'm mentioning it fast now because. I want you guys to go back to the recordings and also watch it as well. Then we have the lamb that the author mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. The lamb is al milk, ownership. It means what? Ownership. For example, you say al malu li Khalidin. The money is owned by Khalid. Does that make sense? Al malu li Khalidin. The scholars, they say, if the thing that's being spoken about is tangible, like we can touch it, then the lamb becomes ownership, it becomes milk ownership. But if that thing cannot be touched, it's basically not tangible, okay, then the scholars, they say here, it is 
specify, specification, you're specifying this for the person. Does that make sense? Like for example, the hamd in, you know, alhamdu lillahi, that lamb, lillahi, that lamb there. That lamb, because hamd is not something that's like gold or money or what? We say is lamb al ikhtisas. Sahih? Does that make sense? Or stihqaq or ikhtas, they can go there, that side, no problem. But it's not lam al milkiya. Does that make sense? It's not the lamb of ownership. Are we all on the same page or no? Because a lot of people just confuse each other. Then the author concluded with three huruf al khafdi, but they, they have a different name as well. Are you there? They do what the, the, the previous letters do. They do what the word min does, ila does, an does, ala does, fi does, rubba does, ba does, the kaf does, and also the lamb does. It does all of that, but it's not referred to as huruf al khafdi as so. It's not just called huruf al khafdi. It does what huruf al khafdi does, but it also has a distinct thing, which is they're basically oaths and promises. And a lot of you guys are fully aware that the Somalis generally use it a lot. Sah? Yeah, so we're here. It's the it's the wow, wow, and it's the ba, and it's the ta, wa, ba, and ta. It's these three. Are we all together? The wa, the ba, and the ta. Like for example, when you say wallahi, you say that right. What happened to the word Allahi? Look what you did to it. It's harf huruf al khafti. It then khafti to it. Wallahi. You say. Sah? You say. Billahi. You see it. You say what? Tallahi. Say Wallahi. Billahi. Tallahi. They're all huruf al huruf al qasam. They're called. The promises, oaths that you're making. Does that make sense? But they also do what the huruf al khafdi do. They make khafd on the name of Allah. But there are difference between each one. What's the difference between each one? There are differences. Does anyone remember? I mentioned it in the class when we were teaching the Metanul Ajrumiyah. Does anyone know the difference between the three? No, not you two. The wow, what did we say? It enters on, onto, only onto? Isim, which is zahir. Sah? The first one is wallahi. It will only enter onto a apparent noun. Isim, which is zahir, an apparent noun. Are you with me? Very good. And you can't mention with it a verb. No, it doesn't. You can't mention a verb with it. Well, I use karuma'aha fi'lun. For example, uqsimu la uqsimu bi yawmil la uqsimu. Uqsimu means what's uqsimu? Qasam, I swear. Is it, is it a verb? Is it not a verb? لا أقسم You can't say لا أقسم والله أما أقسم والله You can't say it's grammatically wrong You can't say أقسم I swear والله You can't say it The wow doesn't You can't mention no, 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 no verb like that with it It doesn't accept it Very good The ba The ba which is Billahi. It enters onto a ism which is Zahir, an apparent noun, and it also enters into pronoun. Sah? So you can say, so you could say, Uqsimu, and it accepts a verb to come with it. And it accepts a verb. So you can say, Uqsimu Billah. Uqsimu Billah, I swear by Allah. You can say that, no problem. You put the verb before it, you can say it. Also, 
you're also allowed to say uqsimu bihi bihi that ha is a pronoun so we have two you can do you can say uqsimu you can say uqsimu bihi bihi that ha is a pronoun it's a dhamir so it entered the ba the ba here is about it's about al qasam right it enters onto you can say uqsimu billahi I say by Allah, so Billahi, it, it entered the ism which is apparent. And it also enters a pronoun. So you can say, Uqsimu bihi, that ba is a, is a pronoun. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Ah. Huh? Walladhi la ilaha. Hey. Walladhi. Hey, what's the. Jameel, what's the push? Okay. No, no, no. This is not Wawal Qasam. He said it's Wawal Qasam. And he says, and the one, and by the one now. You mean the Wawal is the Qasam of the Walladina? So the hadith, read the hadith for me. Inna hadakum la yujma'u bi khalqu fi badni ummi arba'ina yawman nutfa thumma yukun alaqata mithla dhalik thumma yukun mudghata mithla dhalik thumma yursal ulayhi malaku fa yufaqu fi al-ruh yumaru bi arba'a kalimat bi kathbi rizqi wa ajili wa amini shakhi wa sa'id. So the beginning is Inna hadakum yujma'u khalqu fi badni ummi sah? So yujma'u khalqu fi badni ummi arba'ina yawman nutfa thumma yukun alaqata mithla dhalik thumma yukun mudghata mithla dhalik thumma yursal ulayhi malak fa yumfaqu fi al-ruh wa yumaru bi arba'a kalimat bi kathbi rizqihi wa ajalihi wa amalihi shakhi wa sa'id. Fawalladhi, no walladhi. Ah, that's not a qasam. I don't think it's a wawul qasam. فَوَالَّذِي لَا إِلَهَا غَيْرُهُ إِنَّا فَوَالَّذِي Huh? وَالَّذِي وَالَّذِي نَسُ مُحَمَّدِ بِيَدِي No, it's and the one. No, no, the wow is not wow al qasam. 100%. Impossible. I know it the way I know I'm going to die one day. It's wow al atfi. It's wow al atfi. This qaida mubarida. You can't paste this qaida. Now, the meaning is, and I swear by the one. Swear is there, but it's and I swear by the one. And the wow is here. And. The qasam is probably in the alladhi. It's in the man of the alladhi. Because the Arabs sometimes they say, Aliya and Akuma. Upon me is to stand up. And the qasim is in the Aliya. Does it make sense? Could be. It could be. So we're here. Let's, let's take this on slowly, slowly, bit by bit. Digest it. The ba here, we said it enters into the ism bahir and it enters into the ism mudmar. And we also said it can be accompanied with an if fi'l, fi'l qasim, right? So you say, Uqsimu billahi, I swear by the Lord, wa Uqsimu bihi. We're left with the ta now. The ta is the only one that has this principle, and that is it only enters onto Allah's name, Allah. Not even the other names. It doesn't enter into Ar-Rahman. You can't say Tar-Rahman, Tar-Rahim. No, no, no. It specifically enters only onto Lafzul Jalala. Allah only enters into that one. And no verb can be mentioned with it. So it's only Tallahi. It's specific to who? It's specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do find Tarrahmani, which you might sometimes come across it, rarely, you know this is shad, it's a strange, strange view, and it is against the principle of the grammarians. It's against the grammarians, the principle of the grammarians. Inshallah ta'ala, we only have 15 minutes left. We'll take questions and answers. Bi-ibnillahi al kareem Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.